Rulers of Fish Keeping World, symbols of beauty and challenge. Discus fish. But do you know the difference between the majestic wild discus and the captive breed hybrid discus? Welcome to PSK Aqua. Hello my friends, welcome back to the channel. When it comes to fish keeping, discus is undoubtedly one of the most iconic species. Their beauty, unique behavior and the challenge they present to experienced aquarists make them the focus of many aquarium enthusiasts. However, within the discus universe there's a sharp division. The wild ones, directly captured from nature, and the hybrids, the result of years of captive breeding. What's the difference between them? Which one is best suited for your aquarium? And what specific care does each one require? In this video, we'll cover everything from origin and appearance to behavior, diet, aquarium conditions and much more. By the end, you'll be a true discus expert and have all the information to make the perfect decision. Wild discus come from the rivers of the Amazon basin, specifically from areas like the Rio Negro, Tapajos and Madeira. These habitats are characterized by extremely acid waters, soft water and tannic stained hues caused by the decomposition of leaves and submerged wood. This environment provides natural shelters that influence the behavior and appearance of this fish. In the wild, discus group together in small schools and rely heavily on camouflage to evade predators. Their natural colors, brown, green and bluish tones, are directly adaptations to their environment. Each wild subspecies has unique features such as Heckle discus, known for his distinct vertical stripe in the center of the body, and the Tefe green, famous for its greenish hues and delicate patterns on its fins. Hybrid discus, on the other hand, are the result of decades of captic breeding. Breeders worldwide have crossbred different subspecies selecting desirable traits such as uh, vibrant colors and unique patterns. These fish do not have a natural habitat but adapt well to aquariums with more neutral pH and medium hard water. Still, their wild genes means uh, they continue to prefer warm, well-filtered water and temperature between 26 degrees Celsius and 29 degrees Celsius. The history of discus in fish keeping is as fascinating as their biology. This iconic Amazonian fish was first described in 1840 by the German naturalist Johann Jakob Heckel, who identified the Symphysidon discus. However, it took decades for discus to appear in the aquariums of enthusiasts in Europe and America. In the beginning, transporting discus from the Amazon to other continents was a real challenge. Many fish didn't survive the long sea journey due to a lack of knowledge about their specific needs such as soft and acidic water. Only in the middle uh, in 20th century did the hobby start to gain traction thanks to advancements in transport techniques and aquarium maintenance systems. During this time, pioneering breeders like Jack Watley revolutionized fish keeping by developing uh, more adaptable hybrids and promoting proper care practices. These breeders helped to make uh, discus a highlight in both exhibitions and home aquariums. Today, breeding and maintaining discus have been made easier by innovations like uh, digital pH controllers, reverse osmosis systems and enriched diets. Additionally, adjustable light lights allows aquarists to recreate light conditions similar to the Amazon, promoting the well-being of this fish. The hobby has evolved into an art of form, with international competitions that award prizes to the most impressive specimen in terms of color, patterns and body shape. 
appearance of wild discus reflects their natural origins. Their colors are typical more subdued, with earthy tones, browns and greens predominating, interlaced with bluish lines or irregular patterns on their fins. These colors are not just for display, but serves a functional purpose, helping them camouflage in the Amazon environment. For example, the blue heckle features bright blue markings and the iconic dark central stripe. The red alencar is known for its reddish tones, reflecting the murky waters of its native region. However, this color may appear dull in poorly lit aquariums or under unsuitable water conditions. Hybrids are a spectacular artificial colors achieved through selective breeding. Popular varieties include the pigeon blood with a white or golden body covered in bright red spots or lines, and the turquoise, a feature intense blue tones and vibrant fin patterns. Unlike wild discus, hybrids maintain consistent and bright colors even in less than ideal water conditions. Wild discus are more reserved and cautious. In the wild, they rely on discretion to avoid predators, which result in shy behavior in aquariums. They may take weeks or even months to adapt, especially if placed in busy or poorly set up tanks. Wild discus also have a strong social hierarchy. Territorial behavior is more pronounced, especially during breeding, and it's common to see them defending specific areas of the aquarium. On the other hand, hybrids have been bred to be more sociable and adaptable. They are used to human interaction from birth, making them less shy and more likely to approach when someone comes uh, near the tank, especially at feeding time. Although they may display some territorially during breeding, hybrids are generally more peaceful and easier to keep in community tanks. Feeding wild discus can be a challenge. In their natural environment, they eat small crustaceans, insects and plant matter. In aquariums, they may reject commercial foods and prefer live or frozen options like brine shrimp, mosquito larvae or daphnia. To ease the transition, it is recommended to offer high-quality pellets enriched with natural ingredients. Brands such as Sera, Ikari, Tropical and Discus Food provide specific products for discus, which helps with adaptation. Hybrids are much easier to feed. From a young age, they accept commercial pellets, especially those formulated to enhance a color and promote healthy growth. They also tolerate a variety diet that includes live, frozen or even homemade foods like spinach and protein-based pasts. Replicating the habitat of wild discus is crucial. Ideal conditions include the pH between 4 and 6.5, depending on their origin, water hardness extremely soft, temperature between 26 degrees Celsius and 29 degrees Celsius, and strong filtration to ensure clear, residue-free water. Adding Indian almond leaves or driftwoods to the tank can help mimic the natural chemistry of Amazonian rivers and reduce stress in the fish. Hybrids are more tolerant. They can thrive in water with a pH of 6.5 and 7.5, moderate hardness and similar temperature to their wild counterparts. This flexibility makes them ideal for beginners or aquarists without access to specialized equipment. Breeding discus is one of the most fascinating aspects of their biology. Both wild and hybrid discus exhibit unique parental behaviors that are rare among aquarium fish. Mating begins with a courtship ritual that includes circular dances and kissing between partners, indicating a strong bond. Wild discus usually select partners within schools, while hybrids tend to pair up more easily 
in community tanks. Discus choose smooth surfaces like driftwood or large leaves to lay their eggs. After spawning, both parents protect the eggs from predators and constantly fan them with their fins to oxygenate the surrounding water. This behavior demonstrates their highly uh, intelligence and strong parental instincts. The most fascinating detail? For the first few weeks, fried feed a nutrient-rich secretion produced on their parent skin, similar to mammals' milk. This parental care is vital for healthy fry development and is a unique spectacular for those uh, keeping discus. Wild discus are more selective about their partners and breeding conditions. Hybrids, bred in captivity, are more adaptable, making them easier to breed in aquariums. However, both types require strict water uh, parameters to ensure successful reproduction. Last but not least, we need to address environmental impact and ethics in the hobby. Overharvesting of wild discus can harm Amazonian ecosystems. It is vital to choose fish from ethical suppliers and support conservation projects. Captive breeding plays a significant role in reducing pressure on wild populations. Investing in fish from certified breeders contributes to the hobby sustainability. Now that you know all the details about wild and hybrid discus, which one do you think suits your aquarium better? The wilds uh, with their authenticity and challenges or the hybrids with their diversity of colors and easier maintenance? Share your opinion in the comments and tell us about your experience with this majestic fish. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe and turn on notifications for more amazing aquaristics content. Thank you for your support and I'll see you in the next video.